Welcome to Football Forecast Weekly, the most popular football program in America, featuring Dennis Tobler and Fred Wallen. Hello, football fans. I'm Dennis Tobler in Las Vegas, and this is Football Forecast Weekly. And we're really proud to be back again for another week of uh, analyzing the football games after taking a week off to support the Writers Guild. And uh, as we mentioned before, Fred's a member of SAGA. I'm a member of the Writers Guild. I have a lot of trademarks and uh, uh, copyrights pending there. So we needed to follow the guidance. And as far as the Writers Guild goes, I believe it's solved. So we're looking forward to finishing off the year with the Super Bowl here in Las Vegas. And you'll want to stay with us all year long as we do that. Well, last week we were off, but we did have a big development in the football world, and that was we lost a great football player in Mr. Dick Butkus. Yes, that's right. The Chicago Bear, who uh, was the meanest of them all, he only played nine years in the NFL but left his mark. The Linebacker of the Year Award is named for Dick Butkus. And uh, Fred, I want to bring you on, and then I have a little photo to show and a couple of stories to tell. Uh, what's your feeling about our loss of Dick? One of the greats of all time. In 1960, uh, CBS report 60 Minutes did a thing on Sam Huff, and he was the only guy who could supposedly stop Jim Brown. So in my lifetime, it was Sam Huff and Dick Butkus, and there were no better. And uh, he died at 80, and uh, people will say he lived a good life. Well, it's never long enough, and... Uh, very, very sorry for the loss of Dick Butkus. Yeah, I was sorry to hear it too. 80, I don't know what happened, but every time I was with him, he was full of energy and enthusiasm about everything in the early 90s. He'd come out here once in a while for that. I'm sure you remember it, Fred, the NFL arm wrestling contest when they yeah. used to have the contest ballets or wherever. And uh, there'd be a lot of football players in town for that in the old days. And we'd go down there and interview each one of them because we could put them on the show during the year. So we met Dick that way. And I told him I was from Nebraska and all this. And then we went down. And if Alan, you'll put this picture up. My wife and I met Dick at one of the places here in Las Vegas. Oh, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 years ago. And uh, during that time, we we had a good chance to talk and he, he knew I was from Nebraska because he always called me Nebraska after I met him the first time back in the nineties. And he says, I just left from your old alma mater. I go, I went to Kearney state teachers college in Nebraska, which is now the university of Nebraska at Kearney. He goes, I know I was in Kearney this week. And I go, what were you doing there? And he goes, I was there to help young kids get football equipment. I have a, uh, a little, uh, what do you call it, charity that supports young kids football. And I try to generate enough so they can have the equipment they need to play safe football. And I thought, wow, that's pretty good, Dick, ahead of your time and everything else. But uh, yeah, I'm going to miss him. I want to mention this too, for the people that go to my footballforecast.com website, and they always complain about how old it looks. Well, it looks old because it is. That website went up in the early 90s. I've had it since that time. And at the bottom of the front page are two awards from Dick Butkus. In the 90s, Dick Butkus searched out the websites that were good for football, and he awarded us the All-Pro Website Awards in the early 90s for footballforecast.com. It can't get any better than that for me. And I'm going to leave that website page up there forever. And we will miss Dick. Rest in peace. And uh, with the world in turmoil the way it is, it's hard to lose anybody. But to lose Dick was uh, really hard for me. I will say one other thing. He was at the height of his career when I was playing football in high school and early college years. I wore number 51. I wore number 51 because I was a Dick Butkus fan. So, I mean, that man has been a, an idol for me for all of my life. I hated to see him go at that, such a young age, and he will be missed. So that's our tribute to Dick Butkus, and uh, I hope the world can say goodbye in good shape because he was a good man. 
Okay, I think it's time we talk a little football. We have a lot to talk about today because we got baseball going on. We have college football going on. I have a lot of contacts from people and messages us about our shows, about plays, about this and that. And I want to bring in, you know, some of their input as we go along, too. So let's start off this week and uh, another game in London, Fred. Um, and I must say uh, it's Mia Copa on my analysis last week of Jacksonville. I didn't know they stayed in London for two weeks. I didn't know it till the next week when the schedule came out. So maybe I'm dropping the ball a little bit, but with Jacksonville there for two weeks, it was still strange to me that the uh, Buffalo Bills were five-point favorites. And that was one of the consensus picks in the big contest here. But Jacksonville shoved it right at them, and uh, uh, they're coming home in good shape. We'll talk more about that game later. But this game's in London, Baltimore Ravens, Tennessee Titans, no home team. The Ravens were three. They went up to four since I sent out the sheet this morning. So, you know, let's take a look at it. The Baltimore Ravens, minus three, minus four on the road. Well, again, Lamar Jackson cannot play as poorly as he played last week. Uh, he didn't do anything right. So from the, it's a small enough number. I think he figured the Ravens would come back and play a much better game than that. So you got to lean a little bit toward uh, Baltimore, but it's not one of my uh, – Best plays of the week, but it's a it's a play that uh, I think is just common sense. I like Baltimore too. I mean, I just think they're stronger uh, than Tennessee. Tennessee relies on the run game so much, but they didn't come through last week when they should have. All the money went on Tennessee, and they failed in their attempt at doing that. I'm taking Baltimore in this one too. Okay, that'll be early in the morning in London, folks. And I want to say this: it's on. Uh, ESPN Plus, but it's also on the NFL Network. If you have cable TV, you can get it on it. NFL Network. Um, the next game is the hapless Washington Commanders versus the hapless Atlanta Falcons. Good luck with that, Fred. The line's three. The home team's a three-point favorite. You know, Ritter very seldom loses at home as much as people get on him. He played well last week. He threw for like 300 and something yardage. Uh, you know, he was, uh, what was he, 46 and six at the University of Cincinnati, something like that. And he never lost at home in, the, in his four years there. And he's lost very few times at home in the Na National Football League. So I think you go with uh, with that. And he, as a kid gets better and better, hopefully. And, uh, you know, he's more talented than a lot of quarterbacks in the National Football League, I'm going to tell you that. Yeah, he is, and he's probably as talented as the Washington quarterback or more talented than the Washington quarterback. I mean, the Washington commanders, I guess we have to call them now, uh, are hapless. They're a worthless team. The only person on that whole entire team – look, first of all, I want to say this. Ron Rivera and Jack Del Rio are supposed to be defensive coach geniuses, right? Both of them. Right. In that game last week, their defense got ran all over the entire game. And I was almost thinking that it's time to call out some cheating because I watched the cornerbacks and the safeties just wing arms out when those guys were going 30 yards for touchdowns. I thought it was very pathetic. I, I don't know. The only positive I can see on that Washington commanders team is their coach, Eric B enemy, the offensive coordinator. He's the only one. And if he had a real team, first team quarterback instead of that rookie kid or whatever he is, the North Carolina guy, home, if, he had, if he had somebody better than that, he would be able to run the offense and not doing a bad job calling the offensive plays. And that being said, I followed Eric Bieniemy's career all the way from high school in Denver to CU to the Broncos to other teams in the NFL. And he knows a lot about football. Why hasn't that guy gotten a uh, head coaching job? You see all these other idiots out there. I think Eric B. Enemy can handle a uh, coaching head coaching job for sure. So hopefully he will get that. But as far as Washington goes, I'm done supporting them for the season. This line started at one and a half, went to two and a half, now three. It'll probably be five by game time because Atlanta will beat them at home. I agree. Okay. Uh, yes. Let me just say this. Okay. Eric Bieniemy's problem goes way back. We know what happened. I mean, with the uh, 
sexual harassment uh, allegations. And that, that's the otherwise, of course, he would have had a job 10 years ago. So or five years ago, he would have had he would have had a job. So people don't forget that. And uh, you, you don't put right now, the NFL is not going to put itself in that kind of position. So uh, it, right now, he's going to have to settle with the offensive uh, coordinator. Well, I, to me, there isn't much difference. And if the NFL is trying to make a statement, what's the difference between the coach and the offensive coordinator, you know? So anyway, and also some of this stuff needs to you pay your dues. It needs to be forgotten so you can go forward. Anyway, let's uh, take a look at a very fun one this week. And we're going to bring up Dick Butkus again here because the day he passed away, the Chicago Bears scored 40 points and won their game on Thursday night. They're going to take on the Minnesota Vikings at home. Minnesota's nothing to – I mean, here's another quarterback that I don't know how he plays in the league this long, okay? The guy's no good. I don't – Cousins is no good. He's just a journeyman quarterback that's no better than Ryan Fitz, Jarrett, Fitzpatrick or whatever his name was, the bearded dude. OK, so, I mean, and the Bears, how they ever scored 20 points had to be Dick Butkus leading them from the sky because or 40 points. I mean, how they ever score 40 points. They look like an all pro team. It blew everybody's mind on that game. And obviously that game was also a six point home favorite there. And we're talking about Washington, right? They got beat. That's that's that tells you a lot. That tells you a lot in the whole team thesis and everything else. Minnesota, I don't think they know how to fight. They should have came closer last week. The Bears are a complete question mark to me. What happened in that game to make them score 40 points when they haven't scored anything? So this game here, I, I'm i going to pass. I never pass. But I got to pass. So there you have it, folks. Make up your own mind on the Bears. Yeah, let me okay, let me, Seattle, Seahawks, let, me add, yeah. let me let me add a couple of things here. Justin Fields threw four touchdown passes in the forty point uh, scoring attack uh, last Thursday, and uh, Jefferson's not playing for Minnesota, so I'm going with the Bears. Well, that but, hurts. That hurts Minnesota for sure with Jefferson out. He's about all they had. You know, once in a while, Cousins could get him the ball. So I mean, if you know, taking the points on a home team. Is the only way to go when you're in, in a conclusion like I am where you can't pick the winner. Take the home team. Okay, uh, the best team in the league, the San Francisco 49ers, on the road to play one of the worst teams in the league, the Cleveland Browns. Now, the 49ers demolished Dallas, and I hope we get to talk about Dallas. They're not on by, so we will talk about them a little bit later in the show. But uh, the San Francisco 49ers are well coached. They are completely disciplined i i'll say every one of them does their job every one of them seems not to have an ego that over inflates everything else going on and that quarterback who was the last in the draft has made everybody sneeze a couple of times because how could you miss this guy i watched him at iowa state he's as good as anybody that was drafted that year so i'm not as surprised about brock as everybody else is I think the San Francisco 49ers will name the score in this game. I think they'll win 40 to 10. Sean Watson probably not going uh, for Cleveland, which means the DTR, uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson from UCLA, will probably, and he didn't play well last week. So uh, I think the 49ers will win easily. However, as you know, I play fantasy. And they have so many ways to score, the 49ers do, that it's awfully tough. So Last week, I do have Kittle in a couple of my uh, fantasy teams, but I, you know, McCaffrey did not have a great game. So this week, the 49ers will win, and I'm going back to McCaffrey to get double points as far as or, or uh, time, a time and a half with McCaffrey if you do play fantasy. I just have a hunch McCaffrey will make up. He didn't have a great game last week. But it's impossible to stop Kittle, the two receivers, Al I, I mean, and Debo, I mean, and, and Kittle – and McCaffrey, how do you stop these guys? You really can't. And defensively, they can stop anybody. So right now, uh, Philadelphia and San Francisco are the best, but I think right now the 49ers would be considered the best team in the NFL. 
Yeah, I, th- I, I agree 100%. I believe they'll go all the way to the Super Bowl and win it. I really do. Uh, the next match up here, and then we're going to take a short break, is the New Orleans Saints one-point road favorite at Houston. I like the Saints. I like Derek Carr. I knew he would bring something better to the Saints than what they had. And he's played very well, and I think they're going to win again on the road. I'm going to take New Orleans and lay the point. I'm going to take the home team with the rookie quarterback, and we'll go from there. He's played well, I will say that, and they have surprised. And uh, this kind of will be a telltale sign of how good Houston is, I believe, because Derry can control the ball. He doesn't turn it over. You know, he plays a discipline game, a quarterback. He's a much better quarterback than Kurt Cousins and some of these other guys we talk about. And when he gets the system down and he gets some rest and lets the the other guy come in and run on third down and things like that, you know, or fourth down, that's just great. That keeps the defense off balance, you know, and that helps a guy like Derry Carr because he's just a fundamental guy. He can fundamentally do the right thing and hope he holds on to the ball and don't throw any interceptions. Okay, we're going to take a short break now. I'd like all of you to watch the show, the documentary, Now Place Your Bets, The History of Sports Betting in America. I've heard from a couple of people this week that watched it on Amazon Prime Video. Uh, Love the comments. Keep them coming. And now we'll have a little message about the uh, documentary, and we'll be back with more football right after this. Now Place Your Bets. This groundbreaking film details the dramatic rise of legal sports betting in Las Vegas and its growth into a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide. Through in-depth interviews, personal accounts, and vintage footage, we highlight the key elements and milestones that shape the sports betting industry into what it is today. This history also dovetails with the changing fortunes of Las Vegas as a gambling town at turns overseen by the elements of organized crime corporate interests and the U.S. government. Featured prominently in the film are pioneer odds makers and historians who witnessed these events. Today, betting on sports is a popular pastime and a lifestyle choice for many Americans. Its appeal incorporates the innate drive for competition and the rewards of winning. Watch Now Place Your Bets on Amazon Prime and NowPlaceYourBets.com. Welcome back to Football Forecast Weekly, everyone. I'm Dennis Tobler here with Fred Wallen. And before we get back into the football handicapping or football early week picks, uh, let's talk a little bit about baseball. I mean, I love baseball this time of year. Every game, there's every day there's a game or two. And uh, a lot of times the underdogs cover in these games, they're good bettable possibilities. Fred, I wanted you to talk a little bit about it and who you see making it to the next step and maybe even to the World Series. You don't have to elaborate much, but I must tell the audience that Fred Wallen knows as much about baseball as anybody I've ever spoken to. So I want to hear his opinion on the baseball. Fred, what do you think? Who makes it to the World Series? Folks, we're taping this on Tuesday, and Dennis and I talked last week, and I said I'm going to take the two underdogs uh, in the National League because of the fact that uh, uh, the Dodgers uh, really, this is before Kershaw got bombed and before Miller couldn't get out of the second frame uh, uh, on Monday night, they don't have their real starting pitchers. Bueller was supposed to come back. He didn't. Urias, uh, of course, got in trouble. Uh, so, I mean, and, and uh, Dustin Mays, they'd be the starters. So basically Kershaw would be number four. He had to start in game one. And he he didn't get out of the first inning. He got one out. So uh, I like the two uh, National League uh, underdogs. Uh, Now the Dodgers are up uh, uh, down 2-0 to Arizona. And uh, in the other game, of course, I really was going well until Atlanta came back to win, uh, knocking off uh, Philadelphia 5-4 when Philly uh, led 4-0. But in the end, I still like uh, the, the Braves, but one through nine, they're one of the best hitting teams of all time. Can't argue that. And I don't want to argue that. However, their pitching is not what it should be either, based on the fact that uh, if you saw Freed last night, he was throwing 91 92 instead of his usual 90, 96 97. There's something wrong with his arm. The Braves don't have their regular pitching. And I don't care if they change the rules 
and uh, uh, maybe it's 75% pitching, 85% pitching. It's mostly pitching. And right now the Phillies have better starters than the Braves do. And obviously Arizona with Gallon and Kelly right now have better starters than the Dodgers do. So, uh, but in the end, the whole thing, I'm going back to the Astros to repeat. Sounds like a wise move to me. It seems like they win at will when they want to win at will, the Astros. I I love to hear what you have to say about that. And you're right. You know, when I seen you post those two underdogs, I thought, okay, Fred's going against the Dodgers. He knows something. So I made sure I hammered down on the same plays you had. <laughs> and then I I I'm it's never enough for me. So I took the uh favorite in that that day and laid the run and a half. Uh, and got them at plus money, too. So I, we have to bring up baseball. Baseball playoffs are the, uh, the one of the funnest times of the year, and they're a great time of year to make money. I don't know how many underdogs have won so far through the wild card rounds and stuff, but a whole lot of underdogs have covered big numbers, and you can make money in baseball. So we just wanted to add that in, and we get close to the World Series. Uh, we'll update it, but I don't think we'll need to because it'll be Houston in there against someone else. Okay, now back to a little football. We skipped over one of the matchups that we have some information on finally. That's the Seattle Seahawks at the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals coming off a big win on the road. They are three-point home favorites against Seattle. What say you? I think we're going to see 60 points in this game or more. What's the exact total number right now? What do you have, Dennis? The total on San Francisco is laying at 46, up from 44. I don't care what it is. I'm going over. And uh, Geno Smith's playing well. And Burrow finally had his first good game of the season. Both of them have fine receivers. Uh, I see no reason that this game doesn't go 35-30 one way or the other. So I have no strong opinion on the winner, but I do have a very strong opinion this game's going over. Wow, I like that. I think I think you're absolutely right about that. They're both going to score. And Burroughs is playing well because he's not hurt anymore, you know, and they're starting to get back into their field. Yeah, I watched that game last week or during the week after the weekend, and uh, they played very well. Not quite sold on Seattle, but they keep fooling me and beating me uh, in this. I'm going to take Cincinnati at home because the line – I can get it to two and a half still. So I want to take them at home while I can get them at two and a half. And uh, the over will be a big play for me in that one, too. That's got to be one of our best plays of the week, the over in the Seattle-Cincinnati game. So everybody write that down. Okay, I want to bring up one more game here. And uh, one of our Facebook followers, Dean Kose the third, sent me a nice response to our show and to the documentary and he's a young handicapper that seems to be on his way up. I see a lot of people that just bragging and then get pissed off when you call them out and things like that. But this guy, he had a lot of nice things to say, and he even contacted me personally, wanted some information on how to be better at what he's doing. I think that's a great thing for young handicappers doing. I told him that he and you and I were both both well over 70, so we have a few years background in this. So I'm 39. I'm 39. Dennis, I'm 39. I don't know. Yeah, you you're wish talking. you were 39. You're almost double 39 now. <laughs> anyway, Gene Kose the third. I want you to know that I paid attention to what you said. He sent me a game. I says, it's very hard to pick games on Tuesday. So he sent me his his game, and I like it. He has a write-up, a little commentary. He's going to take the Indianapolis Colts over the Jacksonville playing back at home. Jacksonville's a four-point favorite in this, and I think he's going to get four-and-a-half plus four-and-a-half because most people are thinking what he's thinking, that the, the Jacksonville may not show their best uh, this week because they're coming back from London. And I'm not going to step on his toes. He likes Indianapolis plus 170, which I got to give him kudos because all day long I see people saying, oh, I parlayed minus 250 and minus 550 and minus 275, and I got back two to one on my money. Well, sure you did, buddy. And the next parlay you lose, you're in the hole, and you're never going to get out. Never. 
So anyway, I liked what this guy has to say. I, I, I encourage everybody to give him a, a good shot at this. And uh, I will say this, though. Jacksonville went to London last year and won and came back and put in a hell of a second half of the NFL season to make it to the playoffs and win a playoff game. So they've been in London for two weeks. They're coming home high. They won two. They went 2-0. and oh, So they're going to be at home again. That would be a little scary here. He also said that he doesn't expect that rookie quarterback to play, and Minshew is at least on a level par with the rookie. I agree with that, too. So I'm going to agree with him on this matchup. Take the plus four and a half on the Colts. Uh, Richardson, you're talking about the, the rookie and, and, and Minshew from the Washington. Quarterback. Yeah, you never know whether he's going to play or he's not. But the, the one change, well, again, Jacksonville from London, also it was Buffalo. So they had to be sky high for the Bills. They True. can't possibly be as high this week. And the other point is, Colts, this will be the second game back for Jonathan Taylor. And he didn't carry the ball a lot. He'll carry the ball more in this one. And when he's healthy, you know, when he's got the new contract now, I, he didn't get what he wanted, but he got more. Uh, you got to watch out. So I got, I do not have a strong opinion on the, the winner here. But I, I do think, as you indicated, uh, Minshew's right now as good as Richardson and Taylor being back for a second game, you can't overlook the Colts here. So I'm going to pass on it, but it uh, should be an interesting game. Well, the, uh, I wanted to say about the Colts too, even though uh, Taylor wasn't back full speed, the other running back ran for 167 yards. So he awesome. must be feeling uh, – uh, Taylor coming back on his tail. Yeah, 160 yards rushing, so you got to give the offensive line a hell of a lot of credit there. And I like taking teams on the road that have good offensive lines. So shout out to Gene. We're going with Indianapolis here. Let's move on down to another crappy game, and we're going to go through this one fast. It's the Carolina Panthers, who are absolutely no good in disarray and will not win a game, are going to play the Miami Dolphins, who's the fastest team in the league, and will score probably 55 points in this matchup. And I look for him to win by 40 or more. Well, again, uh, right now I, I see 10 and a half or 11, I think, for the Dolphins. Uh, so my 13 rule. 13 and a half. 13 went, and a half on the jumped Dolphins. Up, jumped up to 13 and a half. My rule basically is I'm really not going to bet real money if it's over 10. But in this case, I might make an <laughs> exception I, again because, uh, again, uh, Carolina does not have a lot at this point, and uh, the Dolphins have anything you want offensively. And they had, of course, uh, you know, the one stoppage. But uh, when two is healthy, they're awfully tough to stop. They really are. So they, you could be right. They, they could score 50 again or 60 or 70 in this one. We'll see this what happens. going to be another complete blowout from the start to the finish. I want to mention something about the – Panthers last week they got a touchdown but their touchdown came when they intercepted Kirk Cousins on the one yard line and ran it 99 yards back for a touchdown the other way that's a 14 point swing in the Minnesota game but Minnesota still came back on the road to overcome that 14 point swing and cover against Carolina so Carolina is not going to win another game this year I don't know why they want to keep putting these five foot four quarterbacks in and and even if they can run a four three quarter, I watched linebackers last night weigh two hundred and fifty pounds run four three quarters. So, okay, I mean forties, not quarters. Sorry, folks, because I will get feedback from everything I say wrong on the show. Okay, so don't let me say anything wrong, Fred. Correct it. Okay, here we go. Uh, Detroit Lions. Played magnificently in another easy blowout last week. They go on the road this time, maybe a little tougher. They play the Tampa Bay Bucks. They're three-point road favorites. How do you see it? Over. Over, over, over. Uh, okay, again, the over, the over, over is uh, – this one went from 45-and-a-half to 44. So the total's 44 on both the games. You like the overs on more or less. So The, the, Lions, okay. defense, the Lions defense is better than people think, but – I, I just have a hunch that, uh, you know, Tampa Bay, uh, Mayfield, again, is playing well enough. The Lions will give up points, and Goff is playing tremendously well. So I'm going over again, uh, and certainly at 44, 
I think it's going to be, you know, 35, 27, something in that range. And uh, that one will be a fun game to watch. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Detroit's starting to play, putting it together. They, they're they pretty good when they're in sync. And uh, I think they'll, they'll cover the spread here because uh, – Tampa probably can't stop them. It'd be a, a scoring match. Just like you say, it'd be high scoring. It'd be a who outscores who in this one. I think Detroit can get them. I uh, slightly into the Detroit side, but I love the, your over pick there. Uh, here's another one that's a, I'll probably have say the wrong thing and have comments again, but the New England Patriots are on the road to play the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders opened at one and are now three off their big Monday night win. The Patriots just keep looking sicker and sicker and sicker. And their quarterback keeps looking worse and worse and worse. And I don't know why Bill Belichick was blessed with Tom Brady. But if it wouldn't be for Tom Brady, there'd probably be no Bill Belichick. So you have at this one, we've got two coaches who I don't think are in the same league. However, where did uh, Elf McDaniel come from? He came from New England. Okay? So if anybody could be able to coach against New England, it should be him. I have absolutely no confidence he can do this. I think maybe Bilicek outsmarts him along the way. I'm going to take the three points and take the New England Patriots in a low-scoring game. Oh, in the last two games, uh, the Patriots have lost by 35 and 34 points. Uh, you've got you've got Belichick on one side, and uh, you don't have a great coach on the other, and that's not even open to question. Uh, he as an assistant, he was fine. Even last night, Monday night, you know you you can question his last second decisions uh, uh, not to go for it. Uh, who knows? But anyway, he ended up winning. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the pay, Patriots too to break their. Uh, Bad streak of losing by thirty-five and thirty-four back to back. So we'll we'll go with the Patriots and the and the short number. We'll take the number. Interesting, but I think it's correct because I think really all you have to do is shut down Garoppolo. I mean that's all they have to do. They just concentrate on shutting down Garoppolo and don't let him get the ball to to uh, Adams, and that's about it. So I think they can do that. Giving him one more chance here because if Bilicek blows this one and doesn't cover, I don't know if I can go on him ever the rest of this season. Okay, our surprise team this year, the Arizona Cardinals, they played well again last week. Uh, they're on the road to play the Rams. The line jumped from four and a half to six and a half. The Rams, as we know, got beat last week, and they did not cover the spread. And a lot of people thought they would cover the spread at home. And uh, just goes to show how – good philadelphia really is i mean they neutralized aaron donald i mean i thought he would have a bigger effect in that game and he didn't they neutralized him and when you've got offensive lines like these teams some of these teams do that we're talking about those are the teams going to make it to the playoffs and to the super bowl without a huge tremendous offensive line that knows how to work together you're not going to get to the super bowl no team ever has no, I, again, I, that that was one of my uh, uh, best bets of two weeks ago when we weren't on last week, uh, uh, Philadelphia. But I, I'll be honest with you, I thought they'd score in the 30s, and they only scored 24 to win 24-13. Ram did not score in the second half. Cup is back. I had heard that uh, even though it was the fifth week and he could come back, I had heard early in the week that he wasn't 100%, but he came back and he caught eight passes. With that said, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I think there's gonna be a lot of points scored in this points in this game. So I'm going over with Arizona and, and uh, the Rams. And let me say something again. We talked about uh, quarterback Dobbs of Arizona a couple of weeks ago. He's got an aeronautic and engineering degree from Tennessee. He's gonna find a way to score. I think there'll be a lot of points scored in this one. And so I'm going over with the Rams and the Cardinals. Well, you're on the right side of the money dump. Uh, the lines open the total opened at 46 it's 47 and a half and i agree there's going to be a ton of points scored in this one um 
the Rams are six and a half here. I'm going to take Carolina plus the six and a half because they could backdoor cover this very easily. I'm with you now about the Rams defense, a little bit suspect, but you can't take anything away from Philly. That's for sure. Um, and that takes us to the Philly game. Uh, Philadelphia is on the road, not far, to play the New York Jets. And uh, the New York Jets simply made the Denver Broncos the most embarrassed team in the league. Okay, there cannot be another team in the league more embarrassed than the Denver Broncos. There's a reason the Carolinas and some of them aren't any good. But the Denver Broncos have no reason for being lousy. Now, I'm going to tell you what their reasoning is. They're not on our board this week. I'm going to tell you why they're so bad, because of Vance Johnson. Okay, he's their defensive coordinator. He's horrible. I mean, he's horrible. I believe he was a head coach for them for one year in between some of the meltdowns of the coaching eras. I'm not sure. I think he was a head coach one year somewhere. But he's been a defensive coordinator everywhere. They brought him back into Denver with the new coach this year for the defense to be better. The defense is horrible. And they can't stop anybody. And that hurts Russell because he can't get any momentum going. That being said, I'm not a Russell fan anymore because he just don't get it done. I think he's too fat, Fred. I don't think he can move around like he used to. And I, and I don't know whether it's the coach telling him not to move around or not to move around, but, it, I mean, the, the Broncos sucked. Okay. So, if you, so, if, so the win by the Jets, I don't know what to take away from that, you know, it, it, because the Broncos are so bad. I don't think the Jets are any good. In this game with Philadelphia being a seven-point favorite, we got another blowout on our hands, 35 I, to 10. I agree with you, but I want to go back to the Broncos. I okay. think Sean, I think Sean Payton's ego is so big, he wants his guys there. October 31 is the trading deadline. Cortland Sutton is one of the top 20% of receivers in this league. How many plays did he play against the Jets? Or uh, And Judy, how many plays did he play against the Jets? My point he is – He was hurt a little bit, Judy, but still, he, he played. Sutton, you saw him on the sideline. He looked – angry or depressed or something. So I think he's going to be traded before that deadline. I think it's Peyton trying to get his guys under control. So do not be surprised if every anybody and everybody that uh, Peyton doesn't want gets dealt before uh, October 31, the trading deadline, as far as the, the, the Jets are concerned. Wilson played better, but now he's up against a better team. So I agree with you. I think uh, it'll be a Three touchdown, four touchdown, uh, easy uh, victory for the Buffalo Bills in this one. And, they, and look, at, they're coming off a loss. So maybe even even as many as they want, they'll score as many as they want here. Even though yeah. the Jets' defense is not bad, it's not going to matter uh, because uh, there's no way the Jets are going to be able to move on the Bills. So barring tremendous rainstorm or something or snowstorm, uh, I see the Bills winning uh, very easily in this one. You mean the Eagles? Oh yeah, in, in, in this one. Yeah, the Eagles. I I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, the Jets are no good, and it just shows how bad Denver is. Okay, we're going to take another short break right now, and then we'll be right right back to finish the schedule. Hello, football fans. Dennis Tobler here with some great, exciting news for the 2024 season. You can watch Football Forecast weekly on many outlets from Astound TV Network to footballforecast.com, gamblingbroadcast.com, the Gambling Broadcast Network on YouTube, and many, many, many more stations. Also, I want to tell you that you can access the audio to Football Forecast weekly on every podcast channel. So pick your favorite podcast channel and make sure you bookmark Football Forecast weekly for every week. We're on Amazon Music or Apple Music, Amazon, all the way to Spotify and tune in. Every one of them carries Football Forecast Weekly. So you want to win and you want to win big, stay tuned to Football Forecast Weekly each week right here on this station. Welcome back, everyone. Well, we've talked about the football. We've talked about the baseball. We need to touch on college football a little bit because it's a very interesting year and an exciting year. Fred, what do you see popping out at you in the college football ranks right now? Okay, so uh, Saturday night, 
USC's at home against Arizona, and they're a 22-point favorite. And then four overtimes, USC wins 43-41. to 41. Lincoln Riley was an offensive genius at Oklahoma, and he's been an offensive genius with the Trojans. However, and this week the Trojans play Notre Dame, um, and Notre Dame's coming off a loss to Louisville. Okay, well, my point being, when USC starts facing the Washingtons and the Oregons in the Pac-2, formerly the Pac-12, they're going to have to score 60 points because their defense is not going to stop either one of those clubs. Everybody's going to score against the Trojans of USC. They, that's, the Arizona Wildcats are not a bad team. They're very well coached by Jed Fish, who used to coach as an assistant at, at UCLA. Very well coached, no question. They're going with a freshman quarterback, second start, and they score 41 points against the Trojans of USC. By the way, if you were in the East, that game started at 7.30 Pacific, 10.30 Eastern time, that game ended at 2.30 in the morning. It was a four-hour game with the four overtimes. So my thought is the following. NBC is not happy. USC can't stop anybody. And Notre Dame lost last week, and they faced each other on NBC Saturday late afternoon, early evening, depending where you are. And it, it would be a blockbuster if Notre Dame hasn't lost twice now, once to Ohio State in the last one second, and then – the loss last week to Louisville. So it's not quite the blockbuster it was, but it's a, it'll be a fun game to watch because, uh, again, USC cannot stop anybody. I agree with you. I, it, will, <laughs> it will be a fun game. And I stayed up and watched that USC game. And I kept thinking to myself, nobody on the East Coast is going to watch any of this stuff. That's why they don't know anything on the East Coast. It's 3 o'clock in the morning back there. You know, what the hell? And uh, I had to watch it to see what how it turned out because you told me earlier that Arizona was well coached. You're going to play them tough. And you had that game nailed right on the head. And I know that you're picked to win it all, Georgia. They just demolished their toughest component or opponent, Kentucky, last week. I mean, they demolished Kentucky. So we can quit talking about Kentucky being anywhere in the in the cycle of, of – of the top teams in the league. We still have to put up with everybody talking about the SEC, but you're right about the Pac-12. When they start playing each other, we're really going to have fireworks when that begins. I can't wait for that, too. I think you can bet over 75 in every one of those games and come out okay. <laughs> okay, we have the Sunday night matchup this week, and this one here is for Mr. Robinson, our fan back in, in Philadelphia. His favorite team, the New York Giants, are on the road to take on the returning losers from London, the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are 14-point favorites over this one. And I must say to you, Mr. Robinson, Danny Dimes does not drop dimes. He drops interceptions. His receivers drop his ball. His blockers can't block, and he can't run. He is one of the worst quarterbacks I've ever seen play. Okay? So – this matchup's the Buffalo Bills. I'm sorry, Mr. Robinson, but Buffalo's going to beat the New York Giants another 35-10 to 10 game. Again, uh, Buffalo coming off the loss to Jacksonville, and Barkley or no Barkley, it makes no difference. Uh, uh, the Giants are, aren't any good. You know, I listen to WFAN a lot, and, and I listen to the host, and uh, they all hate the Jets, or and they hate the Giants. Each week it switches who's worse. Now, right now, the Giants are worse. I don't think there's any question. Right, In fact, you could make the case, as of last week and heading into this week, the Giants could be the worst team of the 32. You, I think you could make that case. I yeah, think Arizona. I think Arizona's out of that point. Way out think, of it now. And yeah, I, they and won I think, games, man. And, and I think the Bears are now out of it. So you could make the case the Giants are the worst team in the NFL. Yeah, and it, it, it'd be easy to make that case. They were pathetic to watch them play. They run the ball on the line, and then the quarterback waddles back and tries to wind it out to the sidelines. I mean, I just hate watching them play. I don't know how they can be so bad there. Buffalo's going to be pissed off. There's no doubt about it. They're going to lay it on as many points as they can, providing there's not a 40-mile-an-hour blizzard going on in Buffalo this week. It's going to be a blowout like nobody's ever seen. So 
if I was you people, I would jump all over Buffalo right now because the line, and I want to say this about several of these games this week. Normally you want to take the underdog in the NFL or lean towards the NFL underdog. You don't want to do that this week. There's several teams with small enough point spreads that are going to blow out teams. Like Buffalo is going to be a blowout. Miami's going to be a blowout. San Francisco is going to be a blowout. I wouldn't doubt if Baltimore's a blowout. There's going to be a lot of blowouts, and that means the lines are going to cover. So don't worry about taking dogs all day long. Okay, our final game this week is the Monday night matchup. <laughs> oh, I love to talk about this team, the Dallas Cowboys. Two and a half point favorites, down to two this morning. I see somebody has a wise enough angle. And the total up from 47 to 50 versus the Los Angeles Chargers. Notice I didn't say San Diego. I said the Los Angeles Chargers because the Los Angeles Chargers are going to beat Dallas just the same way. I mean, Dak Prescott throws four interceptions. Give me a break. Until they get rid of Dak Prescott, the Cowboys are going nowhere. OK, I don't care how good their defense is. I don't care what they got. Dak Prescott is the most overrated quarterback ever to play in the NFL. He's the most highest paid quarterback ever to play in the NFL. He will never lead it. And then after the game, I heard Jerry Jones say, Dak Prescott is our man that will lead us to the Super Bowl. So now I know they're going to stick with Dak. And every time they stick with Dak, I'm going with the other team. Matter of fact, the Chargers will beat him. The Chargers have beat them because uh, they got the ball rolling last week and they're going to get it rolling again this week. They'll beat them straight up. I'm taking the Chargers plus the two and the 50. I think it's going to go under 50 unless the Chargers score 50. I don't know how the Dallas team can score any more than they did last week. So wow. uh, I think Dallas sucks. That's it. Char Chargers off last week, uh, but the two weeks previous, uh, the two, two weeks. games previous to that, Brandon Staley made his usual uh, dumb blank uh, mistake, and they still ended up winning, probably saved his job. Based on that, I think uh, Dallas will find a way to score a lot of points. It's going over. I'm not going to I'm not going to pick a winner here, but it's going to go over. He said it was up to 47. I, I, I think I think started at 47, and went to 50. Well, he for, for Prescott to score, throw a couple of touchdown passes and Herbert to uh, top one, two, three quarterbacks in the National Football League. Dallas isn't going to stop him. Obviously, they didn't stop Purdy last week. Um, uh, I don't know. If, this could be a, a 40 to 30 game. So I'm going way over on this one Monday night, and the ESPN is going to be happy. There will be a lot of points scored on that Monday night affair. Yeah, I think there will be a lot of points scored. I'm sticking with my Chargers pick there. I know. I don't think Dallas can pull it out, but we will see. And uh, before we go, I want to say a few things to some of our old fans that we heard from all the time. I haven't heard from Nick the Destroyer in Los Angeles this season yet. I hope he's doing okay. Let's get on the ball, boys. I need some information. Also, Kurt in San Francisco. Kurt, I need some, you know, some information about the Giants and about the – uh, when the Giants were playing, and now about the 49ers, and uh, what's going to happen with your baseball? You were always good at that. Come on, you guys, get on the ball, get back a hold of us, okay? So, for Fred Wallen and Alan Jett in Tennessee, I'm Dennis Tobler in Las Vegas, and that'll do it this week for Football Forecast Weekly. Same time, same station next week. Goodbye and good luck. <laughs>